In order for there to be a best, there has to be a worst. And that's why Game Ranks brings you the 10 worst games of 2015. Number 10, Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. Now, if you can't tell from the name that this is a cash-in on the Amiibo figurines and essentially a board game, which by the way, you will be bored if you attempt to play this thing. It's kind of a cheap toss-up as far as like attempting to get some family fun time in when there's like a million other Wii and Wii U games that are so much better for that. They just want to involve the physical collectibles that you have to buy. I'm not gonna say that I hate Amiibos, cause I don't, but if you really boil them down, they're basically on disc DLC that you have to buy at the store. And this is basically an attempt to cash in on that and Animal Crossing in a shitty board game. Number 9, Battlefield Hardline. Now you might go, really? One of the worst games of the year? But Battlefield Hardline didn't bring anything new to the table whatsoever. The multiplayer is pretty much the same, albeit a little bit different in setting and set dressing. But is it fundamentally different from Battlefield's multiplayer? No. And on top of that, the campaign is just, well to put it in the kindest way I can, uninspired. Truly for one, I didn't really need Battlefield the cop version. With all the police brutality shit we see non-stop nowadays, I'm not really sure how much I want to be that. But that's not really a valid reason for calling the game one of the worst of the year. If it was a great game, I don't think I'd care, but, but well, you know, it's not. Number 8, Gianna Sisters Dream Runners. Okay, so I'm gonna say something that sounds good. Dream Runners is a platforming racing game with a ton of power-ups and seems intended very much for the party crowd. And I think if the game had been executed well, it'd probably be heralded as one of the best games of the year. However, from everything including the gameplay being impossible to keep track of, and you're probably not thinking that looking at the footage, but trust me on this, just try it. And the weird, like, 199 Android platformer graphics. This game is just basically a mess. There's no reason to play it. It's terrible. And really, like, and it's compounded by the fact that it sounds like a really good idea. Number seven, Evolve, which is basically not a game. When Evolve was announced, do you know what the emphasis was on? The DLC that would come out along with Evolve, which by the way, still isn't enough. If you spend the money on the DLC, there's still not enough game here. The concept sounds pretty cool. It's basically a match between one player who is a monster that gets bigger and and scarier and the rest of the players are fighting against it. However, there's no variety in gameplay. It is just devoid of new ideas and changes that keep you coming back. And with the lack of content, it's like a $20 game at most. Number six, Afro Samurai 2. Now, the first wasn't really reviewed that well, but it had a lot of fans people enjoyed the game. And there's something to be said about when people's experience with a game isn't the same as with reviews. However, fan response to the sequel game, not quite the same. The second game plays almost nothing like the first game. I mean, in theory, it's similar. Like, if you described them both, it would sound similar. But not only is the combat crap, the camera absolutely just out there in every way you can imagine, and the slow-mo really weird. But the game also essentially ignores its own canon, and it can be confusing on top of being a game that plays horrifically. Number 5, Overlord, Fellowship of Evil. Now if you're a fan of Diablo-like games, and I am, I'm willing to give almost anything that plays like Diablo or Legend of Zelda a try, and I really think that it was a mistake with this one. This is one of the most monotonous games ever created, and I'm not joking. For something that actually is fairly colorful and nice looking, it's shockingly repetitive. And honestly, it's probably simply because of the type of game it is that I gave it a shot. Sometimes hack and slash can be so refined and smooth that it's just a joy to play. This is the standard didn't try to make it their own, who cares, top down hack and slash Diablo clone. Number four, The Order 1886 is a letdown. When we first saw the game, we were all excited for this thing. It looked like such a rich world. It had a, a lot of history as well as science fiction elements tied into it and a cool monster plot that we all are a little bit familiar with but seem to not be able to get enough of still. And then the game came out and it was five hours long. Five hours long with cutscenes, which frankly is ridiculous. The game plays competently enough, which makes it probably the only game on this list that plays decent other than Battlefield Hardline. But there are other reasons why it's a disaster. Anybody who paid $60 for the Order 1886, I guarantee you feels incredibly shortchanged. Number three, Devil's Third, which is another game with a depressingly large lack of content that also plays like a steaming turd. Maybe a devil's turd, in fact. Really, 
if we sit down and think about it, this is another five hour game that costs too much money. You take part in this really mediocre action in an attempt to take out a terrorist organization you used to be a part of and apparently requires a, a large amount of vaguely Asian tattoos and collect golden eggs to level up with or just buy them from the Wii U shop, one way or the other. The game's boring, the story's boring, and at some point you have to even wonder if the people behind it even cared. Number two, Sunset is a story of Miss Potential, and I don't mean like the story of the game is about Miss Potential. I mean, if you were to say Sunset is, it would be followed by something that could be cool but isn't. It reaches really far with its idea and does something that, frankly, I don't know if I could have come up with myself. But the pace of this game is just deafeningly slow. It struggles very hard to keep the player's interest, and frankly doesn't really progress enough to matter. All things considered, it's a fairly revolutionary idea to to start in a military dictatorship and watch a violent uprising from an apartment well above it, but it just doesn't work. Finally, number one is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5, and holy shit, what a flaming turd this game is. Where Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4 and Tony Hawk's Project 8 were actually not bad games, just maybe overused concepts, Tony Hawk 5 collectively drops trousers on the Tony Hawk franchise and squeezes out quite the Cleveland steamer. The game does not play right, it feels loose and rushed, the skate parks are beyond uninspired. An amateur could make better levels using the editor, assuming you made the best skate park of all time you would even want to play it because as I said the game plays like a flaming turd. But yeah, it's awful. Did you play any of these games? They're really, really just not fun. We'd like you to share your experience in the comments with us and click the like button. I know, I know, you probably didn't like the games, but you know to avoid them now, right? That's worth a little bit of gratitude. If you're not subscribed to Game Ranks, now is a great time to do so. We have new videos that come out every single day of the week and the best way to see them first is a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video and we will see you next time here on Game Rings.